Hello everybody and welcome to a setup video for the channel. I have my setup here in my YouTube room. I'm going to show you the whole thing. We're actually in it right now. A couple of things I want to talk about before we get too into the setup though is I'm going to be doing it on a different camera and it's the built-in microphone. You know, people say how much they love this Canon G7X for vlogging and all that, but you can't plug a microphone into it, which kind of sucks. You know, people say how much they love this Canon G7X for vlogging and all that, but you can't plug a microphone into it, which kind of sucks. Anyway, we're going to use this camera, this microphone, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of show you around the room and I'm going to talk it through as I'm going. I'm not going to do something real fancy or like I zoom in and pan on each piece of equipment that I have because when I was doing YouTube or when I was first getting into YouTube and streaming and all this type of stuff, I felt like the ones or the videos that were most helpful were the ones where you just kind of see their setup as it is. You see a streamer set up as it is. You don't really have it glorified in some light because again, we're just regular people. We sit at home all day and work on our computer. I feel like it's most helpful to see things as they are rather than being glorified in some sort of fancy lighting and yada yada yada. Another thing I want to talk about before we get into me showing you everything is this right here. <coughs> this is my laptop from 2009. This thing is what I started on. This is my college laptop. I spent a ton of my graduation money on it that I got from all my different family members and this is what I started on. I got it for gaming and I started doing YouTube that way and I worked with what I had. The big message I have for anybody who's just getting into streaming or YouTubing or anything like that is work with what you got. I had this laptop, it had a built-in webcam up here and I don't even think I ever used it. I had my old headset, my Turtle Beach X12 or something that I had from when I would play on my PlayStation. And yeah, I had this laptop that, you know, would overheat so I had to put drill a bunch of holes into it so it wouldn't overheat on me. <laughs> like, work with what you got. My setup I have here, it's come a long way since my old laptop. And I want you guys to realize that you don't need to have a fancy schmancy YouTuber setup and you don't need to buy things just because somebody else has them. The biggest thing I would say with setups is if you're gonna buy something, make sure you understand why you're buying it. I wanna get a nicer microphone because I wanna sound better. Okay, but wh what about your voice sounds bad? Understand the problem and then fix that rather than just buying things just because that's the big thing I have when it comes to setups And I hope you guys take that message home when you're trying to you know learn all this stuff for yourself So without further introduction, let's go ahead and I'll take you off of this little tripod I have here and I'll just start showing you around. So let's go Okay, so I lied you're still on the tripod, but that's fine I'll walk you around and I'll show you what's going on inside the YouTube room. Okay? A lot of different things going on and I'll try to talk through each piece of it. I'll try to remember it all and I'll try to be quick about it because I don't want this to be a 40 minute video because let me tell you, it definitely could be. So let's twist you around here. So you walk right into the YouTube room and hopefully things will focus properly. I have everything kind of on auto right now. <laughs> but you walk in here and then I got a bunch of stuff going on in the background and this is the background that you're used to seeing when you're you know, watching the streams, but it doesn't look as fancy when you walk in this way, does it? That's because I got a nicer camera over in that corner over there. And that's what makes things look all fancy, okay? So you walk in here. Got my DX Racer chair right away. And this is chair point for you guys that are wondering, or at least the current chair point. The old chair point's upstairs, but I got all the names on the back, which is pretty cool for all the people that sub on Twitch or have sponsored on YouTube, subbed on Mixer, etc., etc. And then we kind of curve back into here, and then here is where all of my stuff is. And you can see it's very crowded, but that's because there's a reason for it. There's a lot of things going on. So before we talk about all that, let's talk about some more of the fun stuff. Um, up here, these are my badges that I've gotten from going to PAXs. Media badges, all that type of stuff. I hang those up as I get them. And then over here, if you're wondering why I have another table, it's because I have cats, and there's a window right there, and they want to reach the window. And let me tell you, if they can't reach the window, <laughs> they're upset. The real reason there's two tables in here is because I used to have them put together and I had my computer sitting on top of them, but I've since evolved since those primitive days. And then here's my big bear. His name's Honeycomb. Okay, one thing I want to talk to you guys about right now, real quick, is this is not going to look as fancy as you want it to look, okay? It's not going to be all properly cable managed. It's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world. Let me explain myself here before people in the comments are like, oh my God, it's so crazy. I have... Four monitors, two keyboards, two mice, two computers, a PlayStation 4, a Nintendo Switch, an Xbox One wireless controller, 
a freaking Bose headset, a stream deck, a tablet, an audio interface, a DSLR, a freaking three capture cards in one of my computers. I have an Oculus Rift with three sensors plugged in all across the room. I have a webcam and I have a UPS power supply, a external hard drive, an HDMI switch, a router, um, an another thing to power my microphone on the other computer, a splitter for that. And honestly, I'm probably forgetting some crap. So I listed all that off and let me tell you, I did the whole cable management thing once and it was cool and I looked fancy and I loved it, yada, yada, yada. I didn't care that much actually. What you learn really quickly is when it's all properly cable managed and everything's all tight and clean and slick, it's just a big pain in the ass because all those things that I have going on, well, when they're all working together, you know what happens? Things break or they have to be unplugged and plugged back in or you have to turn something on and turn it off. It's just the way this technology thing works, especially when you have so many different parts all working with each other all at the same time. So don't get me wrong, looking fancy is cool. And if you're into looking fancy, that's great for you. But I probably have more plugged into my setup than the average gamer at home does. So I would much rather make it that if I have a problem, especially while I'm live, I wanna go back there and fix it real quick. I don't wanna sit here and have to like unzip my cable sleeves, undo my zip ties, blah, 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 blah. It's a big pain in the butt. So just wanted to get that off my chest before people start complaining, okay? So let's take you back here. And I'll show you the computers right away because that's gonna be the big mess that I was just talking about, right? So back here, I have my two computers. And let me explain what's all going on with the two computers. So this is my streaming rig, and that's my gaming rig. They all look probably fancy or something. If I, I'm not gonna go ahead and tip them over and show you all the stuff on the inside. I would make it so I have to take all the stuff off of them and that'd be a big pain in the butt. I can just list off the things that are inside of them. And then back there is my power supply. What's really nice about that, and I highly recommend, highly recommend, I hope I'm in focus, that if you're a YouTuber and you have expensive stuff that you get one of those, they're like 200 bucks and it's totally worth the money, that you get one of those because what that does is, let's say the power goes out or there's a power surge, I don't lose power to my stuff. I don't lose power to my equipment. I don't run the risk of a power surge going ahead and frying my expensive stuff that I have inside of my computers. I get, with all of my stuff plugged in, I get probably an extra 15 minutes of power that it gives me time to go ahead, turn off my computer, turn off my stream, make it so that everything turns off properly in case lightning came through and turn the power off or my power went out basically. So that's really, really nice and it can definitely save you thousands of dollars. But if you're gonna get one of those, make sure you get the right kind. You have to get like a pure sine wave or some crap like that. Look it up, it's a UPS, uninterruptible power supply, I think they're called. And you have to get the correct one, otherwise it'll make your computers angry. Um, another cool thing that I have back here that a lot of people might not have is this thing. It's an HDMI switch, really, really nice. I have a little, this thing right here a little remote and what I can do with this remote is I can go boop 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 and I can switch between my PC I can switch between my switch I can switch between my PS4 and it makes it so when I'm over here bum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, on this monitor that it shows whatever I want to see so like I said my PC or my switch or my PlayStation or whatever I have plugged in so it's really really nice to have that option right there to plug it on in I have about three capture cards going back in there too. So I have an HD 60, I have a 4K 60, and I have an Evermedia. By the way, thank you, Elgato. Thank you, Elgato. Let's talk about Elgato. They went ahead and they sent me a 4K 60 for free, which was really cool of them. And those things are expensive, but let me tell you, they're so nice. And they completely changed my setup for my dual PC streaming because I run a high refresh rate monitor, which means it's higher than 60 frames a second. It's like 165 frames a second, some IPS monitor. I'll talk about that when we get there, but really, really nice for that because it smooths everything out and you don't have to worry about a bunch of problems that happen if you don't have that going on. All right, well, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on back here. So like I said, in these two computers, I'll try to show you all the nasty wiring that goes on back here because there's just so much that's plugged in. But basically this computer, my gaming computer, I plug this in from an HDMI port into this computer or maybe I do from a display part. Either way, I plug it into this computer and that allows me to go ahead and capture whatever is on my gaming PC into my streaming PC. It basically works like a console. So if you're into capture cards at all and you've plugged a PlayStation or an Xbox or a pretty much anything console into a capture card, it's the same exact concept, nothing fancy going on. 
get away from this light here. And then I have a bunch of other crap plugged into there, but again, nothing too novel. Like I said, I have my router, my wireless router, and I have my HDMI ports. Yeah, I, not my HDMI ports, my hard drive. I don't know why I said HDMI port. The other thing that might be kind of interesting though for people is they don't see these all the time is I actually run a DSLR for my camera when I'm streaming, right? Here's my DSLR. I have a Canon T5i and it has a 50 millimeter lens on it. I recommend the lens, I don't recommend the camera. I would get, I would do your research because when I got this, I didn't realize that when you're doing the HDMI out on it, which is what I have to do, I have to do an HDMI out into one of my capture cards in my computer, which is how I make it so that you can see me while I'm streaming through the DSLR. Either way, there's HDMI resolution and frame rate caps that are built into the body of this thing. Maybe the T6i or the T7i doesn't have this problem, but the T5i does, and I can't fix it with Magic Lantern, so that sucks. I also have a little microphone on top of it, but it's kind of overrated and I spent way too much money on it, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But I highly recommend this lens. If you go ahead and you use a DSLR for your camera when you're streaming and you use the standard kit lens that comes with it, which is usually like an 18 by 55 or an 18 by 135 millimeter, it's not gonna look that good. It really doesn't. So get yourself what they call a nifty 50, get a 50 millimeter lens, and it's only like a hundred bucks, which is like super cheap for lenses, trust me. And it'll look way better. You can get yourself a really nice like Sigma 1.4 aperture 30 millimeter lens for this camera, but they cost like $400. So <laughs> I went with the 50, with the hundred dollar option on the 50 millimeter and it looks pretty good. So other things I have up here are on my foam. So I have all my foam on the front of my desk because you know, I speak that way. So it's gonna try to muffle it out that way. I could put it all back there, but then it wouldn't look as fancy over there with all my stuff I have. I also have a little piece of foam over there because if you study any of this stuff, it kinda, that's one of the areas that you wanna protect against when you are trying to sound treat your room. At least that's what I read. I'm not a professional, but you know what? It sounds okay in my room. And then up here, I have my Oculus Rift and the little controllers for it and the little sensor things that came with it. But I have my sensors kind of plugged in all over the room which you may have noticed, I actually have one right here. And then I also have one way in that corner. And then I have one on top of my monitor too, but he's kind of in the distance over there. You gotta focus on him a little bit. Okay, so that's a lot of the crap that's going on back here. Down there's a disaster and that's just kind of where I throw extra cords or camera bags because I don't know where else to put them and I'm okay with it. So you can be okay with it too, okay? so. Let me back out of here a little bit and then we'll talk about some of the other stuff, okay? Whoop. By the way, before we talk about all this, let's talk about this, my chair. I had an office chair, chair point. Got it from Office Max, used them for like two years. I had lower back pain all the time. I got this DX Racer, I bought it, they didn't give me one. Fixed my lower back problems a lot, so I highly recommend it. I don't know if all gaming chairs will fix it, but this DX Racer definitely did. I have a King Series and I'm about six foot, 190 pounds. And I got a muscular build and it fits me almost a little too big in terms of the arms, but the back is perfect. So keep that in mind if you ever wanna shop for these, okay? Okay, so here's my setup from the front. <laughs> a lot going on. Let's take it piece by piece from the front and we'll walk you through it, okay? So, uh, scooch up a little bit. So hopefully my camera's gonna work with me and focus real nice and not try to focus on the background like it loves to do. But here's my microphone. It's an Audio-Technica 2035. It's all right, microphone. It doesn't sound great out of the box. You have to learn how to use it. You have to learn how to EQ it, which is really easy with a program well like Reaper, which is what I use. I have this little thing on top of it, costs like 10 bucks. I recommend getting one of these over getting a pop filter because a pop filter half the time just gets in your face. It covers your face up more and it's a big pain in the butt. They look fancy and you probably thought they looked fancy when you bought one on Amazon, but honestly, these are way more practical and they do the same thing. Except mine's like kind of turned brown with time, which is kind of weird, but it still works. <laughs> Protects your microphone and gets rid of that popping problem. And also like keeps cat hair out of it because I have cats, I showed you earlier. A big part of my room setup is just because of my cats. Um, I have this arm right here, which is actually kind of broken, this little boom arm. We're not gonna talk about why it's broken, but right here is the scar from it breaking. <laughs> And this is what keeps my, my microphone up. What's really nice about it is that it keeps it off of the desk right there. So if I type, you don't hear it, which is a really big thing for me. I don't want you guys hearing me typing all the time or hearing the reverberation from it touching the table as other things touch the table, like my arms. If you're wondering why I have green on it, 
there was a point in my YouTubing time where I had a green screen, and the green screen had this big old bar sticking out of it because of my, or not the green screen, but my camera had this big old bar sticking out. So I put green tape on it to go ahead and make it so it would chroma key out. Fancy schmancy swing point. So in terms of other things that are on the desk, let's stand up now. And those are my stuffed animals. I usually get a stuffed animal every time I go to PAX. I can't remember which one each of these are from, but I bought each one of these out of PAX. So, <laughs> and that's my Canada duck. So. Let's stand up here and we'll talk about why I have two mice and two monitors, or not two monitors, two mice, two keyboards. You should be able to figure it out because I have two PCs, but I'll talk through how I use them in a practical way and I don't have to sit and type in between each of them, okay? But as you look down here, I have my mouse pad. I highly recommend if you're gonna be playing games to get a nice mouse pad, okay? So what I have is I have, it's like 36 inches long, so at three feet. But then it's also nice and wide. If you're gonna get a if you're gonna get a big mouse pad, make sure it's this way wide too. Because I had one that was like 12 inches this way, and that wasn't enough. I got one, this one is like 16 inches this way, and it's like it was like a $15 mouse pad. And it makes a world of difference having that extra three inches up here when you're trying to play shooters and you play at a low sensitivity. Um my keyboards that I have are a G. A Logitech G105 over here. This is the one on my streaming PC and I hardly ever use it. And then I have my fancy keyboard here, which is really fancy because when I touch it, all the colors come out. Isn't that kind of cool? Look at my keyboard. I like my keyboard. Either way, it's a Corsair Strafe RGB silent switches edition, which was a really big deal for me because the silent switches are super quiet for a mechanical keyboard. Like you can hardly hear that. I could find a regular mechanical keyboard with like red switches and you could listen to how loud it is, but this thing is so nice and quiet and it still has that, you know, that type of mechanical feel for when you're playing games and doing stuff streaming. So I like this keyboard a lot. It's super awesome. And again, the colors are cool. I got mine for like a hundred bucks. They're usually 150. So I got it on sale. They're not cheap, but I thought of it as a good investment seeing as how it makes it so you guys don't hear me typing or touching buttons while I'm playing. I figured that was a good quality of life improvement. So now let's look over at the mice. This is some generic mouse that came with one of my computers. It's just like a I buy power mouse. And that's actually what I used for a really long time was just a generic mouse. I finally, after like years and years and years, got myself a nicer mouse. And this is the Logitech G502 Proteus, I think. And what I really like about it is all the buttons, man. And if you're going to switch from console to PC, I highly recommend getting a mouse with some more buttons, man. It'll feel way more natural because console players are really used to using their hands and touching buttons all over the place. It's not all on keyboard. Getting yourself a mouse like this is a really big deal. I don't recommend getting one of those that has like a calculator on the side. I think those are really dumb. But this Logitech G502, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. By the way, in terms of my computers, I'm not going to talk about what's inside my computers. Mainly because I don't recommend getting what's inside of my computers for your setup because it's it's outdated, some of it. So if you want to see what's in my computers in terms of like processor and graphics card and all that type of crap, let me set you up here. You can go ahead and look at my Twitch. It'll be in the description. I have it all listed there and you can look at all of it there. But I'm not going to talk about it here because it would just blow out the video. And honestly, all I would be doing is listing stuff off. Really the notable things that aren't in just a regular PC are my capture cards, but I already talked about them. An Avermedia C985, which is what my DSLR plugs into, an HD60, which is what my consoles plug into, and a 4K60, which is what my PC plugs into. And the reason why the 4K60 and my PC work together is because I use a high refresh rate monitor, like I said before, and I'll talk about that as we get into it, okay? So let's keep moving here. I'm trying to be quick. A lot of stuff going on. So talk about my monitors here now that we talked about all the stuff that was in front of me i also have some generic speakers that i plug in so i can use my headset or i can use my speakers but actually let's talk about the headset before we talk about the monitors i use a bose qc25 i don't know if it'll zoom in here for you or if it'll focus for you come on work with me not against me there you go so yeah bose qc25 these are really nice they're noise canceling headphones i got them because when i was traveling a lot and they're so nice. They have, I don't use the noise canceling when I'm just sitting here streaming, but they're really nice for travel. I got them for 300 bucks, so they were really expensive when I bought them, but I justified it by saying I use it for travel and then 
I would recommend if you're going to get these, wait for them to go on sale because now they go on sale for like $120, which I would say super cheap for something as quality as bows. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, this camera, I, I don't know why people like these cameras so much. These little G7Xs, I think they're overrated. Anyway, let's talk about the monitors. So I have four monitors and they're all 27 inches and I have them sitting on a Vivo stand that's made for 27 inch monitors, okay? So I don't know how much real estate that is diagonally, probably like 54 inches, is that how math works? <clears throat> Either way, these three monitors, don't worry about them. They're just like extra monitors so I have more screen real estate. This is my fancy one. This is an AOC Aegon, let me see what the model number, AG271QG. It has 165 hertz refresh rate and it's an IPS screen, which is what I wanted it for was the IPS screen because it really gives me more color accuracy when I'm doing stuff in Photoshop, like thumbnails or really any of my other stuff because I make all my own emotes, I make all my own artwork, I never have commissioned any of that out. So I really wanted something that is, you know, nice and accurate. And again, the high refresh rate is really nice too. Once you go high refresh rate, so like 144 hertz monitor, you're never gonna go back. And if you get a G-Sync monitor, yeah, this thing has G-Sync too. I recommend checking out ultra low motion blur within your G-Sync monitor. I don't even use G-Sync because I think it's overrated, but the ultra low motion blur is super awesome. And my battery's almost dead. Uh oh, we got a hustle. I have my tablet here. It's a little Wacom tablet. I use it whenever I'm trying to do stuff for emotes sometimes. I don't use it that often because I don't do emotes that often or like rework them that often, but it's really nice to be able to like draw with your hand as opposed to doing it all with a mouse. Here's my PlayStation 4. I got it on release day, so she's pretty old and also pretty from Shopco. Um, here's my Nintendo Switch. Here's catnip because I have cats and it keeps them, you know, occupied. The camera died. I told you it was going to die. So I think I started going over here and I talked about how I have a big wire coming out of here. That wire plugs into those two doodads over there. So these are my audio interface and then also my preamp. So the audio interface is <clears throat> the one I plug into my streaming PC and that is... Again, it's just what powers my microphone. I can adjust the volume over here. The main nice part about this one is that it came with a really nice software. If you're wondering what this is called, it's called a Line 6 Pod UX2. I like it a lot. I think it pairs really, really nicely with the AT2035 microphone that I have. And this right here is a preamp that I use to power my microphone, but that one goes into my gaming PC. I don't really care what people think I sound like when I'm playing games. I care more what you guys think I sound like. So the nicer one goes into the streaming computer. But you can see I have a splitter here. So this microphone, again, the wire goes all the way over there, wraps around, and then it plugs into the splitter right here. And then this splits off into two different directions that go into my PC. All right, I hope that makes sense. One thing I forgot to mention here, <laughs> super ghetto. You may have noticed the Georgia Pacific paper 500 sheet packs that I have my monitor stand sitting on. One thing that you notice when you're doing this all the time, and I want, kind of want to talk about it, is your health, right? So I stream a lot and I do videos a lot and I've been doing it a lot for years. So <clears throat> you, you realize your eyes can only take so much. You realize your neck and your shoulders, your posture matters. So I got those pieces of or those chunks of paper to raise my monitor stand up a little bit. Um, another thing I have over here that I was sitting on the desk that I didn't even talk about is these little guys. These are my gunners, and they are little blue blockers, and they just kind of sharpen everything up a little bit. It makes looking at my screen way easier. I've been using them more and more. I like them a lot, and they were like 50 bucks, but like you only get one set of eyes. 50 bucks is nothing considering you're taking care of your eyes, right? But you, th those types of things are the types of things you start worrying about when you do this long enough. And maybe I'm just getting older. I don't know what's going on, but the the paper is actually a really big thing for me because it raises my head up a little higher. Again, the same thing with the with the chair too, right? Like I was talking about the DX racer and how it helped my back problems. Again, you only get one back. Who cares if the chair is 300 bucks? You only get one back. How much do you think back surgery costs? Way more than 300 bucks. Let me tell you. So. Think about that stuff when you're buying stuff too. Think of your think of your health, think of your, you know, I don't know if safety is the right word, but like your your overall well-being as you're gonna be doing this stuff for a long time because it matters. And again, you only get one back, you only get one set of eyes, yada yada yada. Make sure you take care of them. Okay? You don't always gotta buy the cheapest stuff just so you can go ahead and save a couple bucks. If it's gonna make you feel better in the long run, I highly recommend it. What else do I have going on here? 
I could talk about all the software stuff I have going on, and it's a lot, and maybe I'll talk about it a little bit, but I guess one other thing I have here real quick is I have a webcam sitting up here. I have a webcam sitting right there. I don't use it too much. It's mainly just from when I have OBS up. So let me see if I can actually, this might be fun. So let's try to do this from my perspective. I think it'd be nice to go ahead and like see these things all screen captured and stuff, but I'm actually gonna try to show you this perspective where you can see how all the stuff on my screens, I'm kind of setting up my tripod right now. You can see all the stuff on the screens as it's like set up or popping up on the screen as I load it up, right? So can you see my screens? Uh, kind of. Let me put you up a little bit higher. All right, so you can kind of see stuff right here. You're not going to see it as clear as I would because, you know, the camera can only do so much and I only have so much lighting in here. But so the main way I have this working is, okay, but, uh, another thing about safety. You see how I have my monitors like super black. All these are really dim and then I have a black background. Again, for me, my eyes get really, they just get really worked up and it, it, it makes me tired throughout the day if my eyes get tired. So having a really dark background is super nice for me. But let's talk about <clears throat> how I bring all these things up. So I have a bar over here, which I think you guys can see. And it has a bunch of my main programs. I have OBS, which is what I used to stream. You guys can even see me here. Let me kind of pop into the frame. I have OBS, which is what I stream with. So this will come up and then I have... Oh my God, I didn't even talk about this. Jesus crap, swing point. My Stream Deck, oh my god, Stream Deck is such a big deal. This is a game changer for me. I don't have all the buttons filled out because my software crashed and I had to reset everything up, so I just got the essentials. But this Stream Deck thing from Elgato is awesome. I highly recommend it. Okay, anyway, so I use my Stream Deck and it's super helpful, helps a lot. Uh, let's go ahead, and pull this back up so I can see you guys. But yeah, I'll have OBS up here and then I press buttons on my Stream Deck. This all looks super blown out because I have way more lighting going on in here than I typically do. Honestly, what I usually do for lighting is you see my lamp over here. I didn't even talk about my lighting situation. I have a lamp over here. This is what I do for lighting. And you see how it's just like a $15 torchier lamp from Walmart? That's because it is a $15 torchier lamp from Walmart. And I only use one of those lights. There's like five different lights that can be going. I use one of them and I angle it on my face and that's it. So like that one is usually on up there. And then that's it. And it's just sitting up there like that. And I like that because it's super low lighting. Like I said, too much light kind of makes my eyes go a little futzy throughout the day. <laughs> so just that one light's really nice. That's also another reason why I dropped my green screen. I used to do a bunch of green screen stuff, too much lighting, too much heat in my room. This is way more comfortable and I think it still looks nice. And like I said, I don't know if I said this, the reason why I'm using a DSLR now is because DSLRs have a much bigger sensor than a webcam does. So that means they can soak in way more light which makes it so that I can have a lower light set up and it still looks good. So again, if you see these things on here, they probably look really blown out because I don't usually have all these lights on, all right? Um, so yeah, I have OBS up and I have other things that I do. This is my software that I use to kind of organize my audio stuff. It's called Voice Meter Banana. Again, I know you guys can't see it that well, but I'm trying to give you like a sense of scale um, what else do I have? I also use a program called Reaper, which is what I use to EQ my microphone. That's how I can sound the same in Discord and in streaming and in my videos because I don't have to do any post-processing because it's all doing it live, which is really nice. I used to have to go in every single audio file. Anytime I recorded stuff, I'd have to go fix it up. Now I just have it so I click record, I click done, and it's perfect, and I love it. So. I use Reaper to go ahead and EQ. Um, I do a little bit of EQing in Voice Meter Banana too, but most of it happens in Reaper. And again, part of what was really nice about that LinePod UX2 is that it came with some really nice EQing stuff. And I'm by no means an audio professional, so the, my methods are probably not the best ones, but they work for me. And really all that matters is that you guys like the end result and you guys seem to like the end result. Um, I keep my chats up on this screen up here. When I do dual streaming, I have YouTube and Mixer here. When I do Twitch, I just have Twitch up. Um, what else do I use? Program that I use that kind of sits in the background, which you guys never see and you never will have to see, is called SparkleCam. And the reason why I use SparkleCam is because if you know a thing or two about DSLRs, they only stay on for like 25 minutes before they automatically turn off. And well, that'd be a problem if I was streaming for three or four hours. So <clears throat> 
I use a program called SparkleCam because inside of SparkleCam, there's a little feature in here that allows me to reset the live view every 25 minutes. And that keeps it so my camera doesn't glitch out every half hour. It doesn't go ahead and turn off every half hour. And it makes it so it's just super smooth the entire recording, which is super awesome. So I like that a lot for live streaming. And honestly, it's the only way to make it so these cameras do that. The at least these Canon DSLRs. I'm sure you can find like some mirrorless ones, like a Panasonic GH4 or something like that, that doesn't have that problem. But for these Canon DSLRs, you need Sparkle Cam or some sort of other utility that allows you to do that. And Sparkle Cam is free if you don't mind having a watermark on it. Since I go ahead and I use a capture card, I don't have a watermark anyway, so I don't have to worry about paying for it. But if you don't have a capture card to dedicate to your Canon DSLR, then you're going to want to get Sparkle Cam. And Cam Link does not work very well with this Canon T5i, so keep that in mind too. I have to I have to use my Avermedia card with my Canon, otherwise I get problems. Okay. In terms of recording locally, let's say I want to do just my camera, I still do that in OBS. So I go ahead and I have profiles set up in here, so you guys will kind of see it switch around, even the even though you're back there. So I can go ahead and I can switch my profile to something that's just for local recording. And then I can also go ahead and switch my scenes. So then you'll see my camera pop up, just my camera. You won't see any other stuff. And that's how I go ahead and I record my camera locally. And then, yeah, see, there you go. And then if you, I also pull up my 4K60 utility if I want to go ahead and record gameplay from my other computer. And then I can mash them all together. In terms of programs that I use for recording, I use the 4K60 utility from Elgato for gameplay on my PC. I use OBS for my camera. I use Audacity to go ahead and record my audio. I also have a bunch of different multiple audio tracks going on in OBS as backups for audio in case something goes wrong because, you know, things go wrong. Sometimes your audio just doesn't want to work properly in, audio, in Audacity, but it works fine in OBS. It has saved me plenty of times. I recommend having backups. Um, oh God, my camera's going to die. <laughs> Not die, but run out of time. One, two, three, go. Okay, I think we're back. And then for programs that I use to edit, I use Premiere Pro, basically, is the main thing I use. I don't really use After Effects ever. Like, I'm sure I could if I wanted to do really fancy stuff, but you can do a lot more in Premiere Pro than you probably think you can. And for thumbnails, I use Photoshop. If you're going to be that person in my comments that says you can use GIMP for free and it's just as good, no, you're wrong. It's not as good as Photoshop. Stop lying. <laughs> Photoshop's like 10 bucks a month if you want to get into it. I know some people, they're like, they're young and they don't have money yet. I, I get that. So GIMP is a good way to get started. But honestly, nobody cares on your resume if you can use GIMP, okay? <laughs> they care if you can use Photoshop. Same thing with Sony Vegas, by the way. I don't recommend Sony Vegas. I recommend Premiere Pro. I used Sony Vegas for a long time. Nobody cares if you can use Sony Vegas. They care if you can use the Creative Cloud in a professional setting. That's kind of why I started YouTube was because I wanted to learn how to use Photoshop and Premiere Pro and these types of tools to go ahead and give myself a reason to play video games, but then also build my professional skills. Again, nobody cares about Sony Vegas and nobody cares about GIMP. There might be some places that use those things, but in general, you'll get farther if you can say you use the Adobe products. Just as, a, just as a general rule, like I said, it can vary. I think one other thing that people might wanna know that's kind of unique to my setup is from when I dual stream onto YouTube and Mixer, I don't use Restream. Like people are, people ask me, how do you stream on YouTube but then also have Mixer's FTL? I actually open up two streaming programs. It used to be more complicated than it is now, but now that Streamlabs OBS is out, I can just open up OBS and then I can open up Streamlabs OBS. And then what I do is, let me see if I can switch these back. But what I do basically is I have OBS be my main driver of my program. That way I can still use Stream Deck and all that. I don't lose any functionality there. And then I go ahead and I full screen projector onto this and it just kind of takes up my whole monitor. And then I go into Streamlabs OBS. I take this as a, like a display capture. No, not a window capture. I take this as a window capture out of OBS into Streamlabs OBS, and then I can just Windows tab, I think, is a Windows tab? Yeah, Windows tab. And then I can just take this thing and throw it onto the second desktop, which, again, you can do that if you have Windows 10. If you don't know that you can do that, it's a really cool way to hide programs. You can go ahead and do that, hide it onto the second monitor, and then it still works in Streamlabs OBS just perfectly, and then I can actually go ahead and still have my screens. 
So I can actually probably pull up, pull up Streamlabs OBS real quick and you'll see it just working perfectly. And again, I'm sorry that my cameras look so blown out right now. It's because I have it lit up for you guys here. Oh, it's downloading an update. <sighs> of course you are. Just give me a second. Okay, well, I brought Streamlabs OBS up. So I'm gonna close out of mini OBS here or regular OBS or I'm gonna minimize it. And then here's Streamlabs OBS. And then you can kind of probably see it still is just, it looks the same exact way. So it's really nice. It's a really good way to work around it. And then you can have the same thing going on on each stream and they all both look really fancy. Um, one thing to keep in mind with that is that I have, I use one as NVENC and then one as H.264. That's kind of technical talk, but the reason why I do that is because you can't run NVENC on two different streams. So if you guys are into streaming, you know what that means. If you're not into streaming, don't worry about it. One last thing I want to talk about, I think, and then I think we're done is how do I use my keyboards and mouse on each PC, right? So I like using my nice keyboard for my editing and all that type of stuff. I don't use it just for when I'm playing games. It's like, it, it, it'd be a big pain in the butt to go ahead and switch between these and like move them around all the time, right? And switch between my two mice. So I have a program that's called Synergy and you set that up and you make it so one computer is the main computer and then one computer is kind of the one that takes in the input. So what happens is this is my gaming keyboard and that's my gaming mouse. That allows me to use it on my streaming PC. And my streaming PC is also my editing PC. So I just use these all the time and I never even have to touch those, like hardly ever. The only time I really ever have to touch them is if like a run as administrator prompt comes up. But otherwise I like never have to touch those. And it's really nice, Synergy's like 10 bucks or something like that. So I highly recommend it. If you have a dual PC setup, you can, I, you got, you got to turn it off if you play a game or like a shooter. Otherwise you're going to go on to your streaming PC on accident sometimes, but it's really easy to turn off. You just click it or you can click scroll lock. That also works too. Um, oh yeah. And the one, okay. One more thing. I have so much crap going on in my setup. <laughs> one more thing. I don't even know if she, where she is. Let me see if I can pull it up. I have a thing that you guys may or may not recognize if you've come to my streams. Her name's Ivy. It's my computer. I talked to her. I wonder if she, if you guys will be able to hear her. Hi, Ivy. Yes, screen point. Yeah. So I use a program called Voice Attack and I get her to talk to me. I make it so that she can hear me and say things. And then I can get her to play music for me. So I'll be like, Ivy, I need some loading music. And she'll do that. That's enough, Ivy. Ivy, I need boss music. So yeah, she can do stuff like that. Um, do it better, Ivy. <clears throat> That's enough, Ivy. And I'm not sure if she can still do this. I guess we'll find out. Take a look here and see if it changes. Um, Ivy video game time. Hey, yeah, so she can still switch scenes for me. I, I had that set up a, for a, a while where she could switch scenes for me. Ivy, chat. So yeah, she used to she used to control all that for me and she used to do my intros and all that type of stuff. I don't really use her as much as I used to. I should, but I don't use her as much as I used to. It's a program called Voice Attack. It's like $8. Okay, I know I'm kind of all over the place with all this, but that's kind of how I feel when I'm streaming. In terms of switching between my gaming PC and my streaming PC for like the actual games, I just click a button. I don't know which button is it. Yeah, it's this button. It's this button on my monitor. And then my gaming PC, up, PC pops up here so I can like play games on my display port. So yeah, Twitter right now. And then if I want to go back to my editing PC and then it flips to HDMI and then I can do whatever on my editing PC. So I think I covered just about all the things that are super unique to me. Again, I'm not going to go into all the what's inside my computer or, you know, show you Premiere Pro because I, I feel like that stuff's super generic and you can you can get that from anywhere. I wanted to cover the stuff that's kind of unique to my setup specifically because I do some things that not a lot of people do and I get questions about them a lot. So I wanted to cover them. So I think that's it, though. If it's not it, well, you're just not going to see it because I, I don't remember right now. <laughs> Let me turn this off. Ugh. But yeah. The big thing with setups is I have a lot going on in mine, but I didn't when I started. So don't feel like you need to have a lot going on. Don't look. I, what bothers me the most is when people just buy something and they don't know why they're buying it. They buy it just because somebody else has it. And sometimes that's just how you got to learn. I get that. 
I went through that stage too, where you just go ahead and you buy something and you, you don't fully understand what you're buying. And it's a learning experience. So maybe you got to go through that. But the big thing that I say is fix a problem with what you're buying. If that makes sense. There's something that you want to fix about it. Then you do your research on how to fix it and then find a product that works to fix your problem. Like with my DSLR, I want to get a nicer camera, but it's because I want to fix the, the resolution and frame rate issues. It's because I don't want to have to use sparkle cam. It's because I want to use different lenses. Like those types of things are the things I want to solve. I don't want to just look nicer in the camera. If that, does that make sense? Like fixing something like I just want to look nicer isn't going to fix it. Like same thing with microphones. This, this microphone, if you just use it out of the box, it's really not that cool. It doesn't sound that great, but you can fix it up a lot if you learn how to use it and you learn how to EQ it, that type of stuff. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I stream all the time, so you can just go ahead and talk to me when I'm streaming. I stream on Mixer, I stream on Twitch, I stream on YouTube. Depends on my mood, depends on the night. It's usually later at night though, but just go ahead and follow. All that stuff will be in the description or follow me on Twitter if you ever have any questions and you can see when I'm live and that type of stuff and just pop on in and say hi. But yeah, this is my this is my setup. I run dual PC, I run a DSLR. I got like a bunch of stuff going on. And I, I think it's pretty cool. And I hope you guys did too. I hope this was an okay setup for a video. Just kind of sitting here talking real casual. I didn't do like a super fancy, you know, again, zoom and pan and fancy lighting and make it look all majestic because that's not what it is. It's, again, I'm just a dude sitting in my room, recording stuff, playing games. I want it to look like that. I want it to be real. So I hope you guys got that vibe. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys thought something was cool. And like I said, if you got any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Go ahead and follow me on social media so I can talk to you guys or answer questions there too. Or you can talk to me while I'm live streaming. And then I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? Thanks for hanging out. Love you all. And bye-bye. Yeah.